So, hey guys, um, this feels like it was a really long time ago, even though it was still technically the off season, re-signed Zach Wood. Uh, just how much consistency does that bring uh, to that unit that's been around, I guess, longer than y'all have both been with the team? Sure, you know, you know Amy, I think um, anytime you can keep that operation together, um, you know, I think that's really important. You know, I was, I was fortunate in Miami to have the same uh, snapper the entire time I was there uh, and, and really realize how important that is. You know, I think Zach really uh, performed well last year. Um, you know, I, I think he really had a big improvement from the year before. Uh, I think that kind of shows, um, you know, the long snapper position is one of those guys where if you're not talking about him, he probably had a great year. He's kind of like an umpire in baseball, a referee. If you don't know his name, he's probably doing a good job. So, you know, I think Zach uh, performed very well. And, and to have that operation back, you know, the only disappointing thing, obviously, here, and it goes for everybody, is not being able to practice those guys here uh, together in the spring. But, uh, but again, having those guys back in the familiarity is huge, for sure. Coach, uh, what are your initial impressions of Ty Montgomery? Um, and do you plan to use him on special teams this year? Yeah, you know, I really liked Ty coming out of college. You know, I, I mean, he was a guy evaluated uh, very, I guess, uh, diligently, I, I guess you'd say. Yeah, I really dove into his background in college and, and watched a lot of college tape on him. He was a guy that we had rated very highly, um, you know, coming out of Stanford, a guy I, I really watched a lot of film on now having played against him and watched him uh, perform in the league. Um, you know, he's a guy that does a lot of different things. You know, he's a guy that uh, not only, I think he probably gets um, noticed mostly as a returner, but he's actually done a lot of different things. He's played on the punt team. He's played uh, personal protector. He's played wing. Uh, he's played in other spots in the punt return game other than returner. Uh, he's been on the kickoff team. So here's a guy that, that's got a lot of value and, and – um, you know, I, I think I speak for every special teams coach when I tell you that you're always looking for offensive skill guys that can bring value to the special teams core positions, not necessarily the returner, but you're always looking for offensive skill guys that can bring value, um, you know. And, and so, you know, having watched him in college and having watched him now for a few years in the NFL, I'm, I'm really excited to work with him. Uh, what do you uh, – this is for either of you guys, but – what uh, do you think some of the next steps are for Deontay Harris uh, coming off of the season he just had? Yeah, you know, I, th I think I, I tell I say this all the time. I think people look at me like I'm crazy, but I think Deontay can actually really improve a lot. Um, you know, I think people just automatically look at the numbers and look at his accolades and look at the, you know, all pro and pro bowl and all that and automatically assume that this guy's got it figured out. I think Deontay would probably be the first guy to tell you that he's got you know enough things to work on. You know, if you look back at last season, which we've obviously had a lot of time during our on our hands here to look back on a lot of things. And, you know, we got off to a slow start in the return game in both punt and kick. And, uh, you know, some of that was growing pains with Deontay. He made some bad decisions early on in the season. Uh, his ball security wasn't great. He made some bad decisions in terms of when to, when to field the ball, when not to field the ball. And so I think those are, those are things he got better at as the year went on. Um, but I certainly think it, it's not a, he's not a finished product yet. And so I think he can actually really make some more strides. You know, we know he's got the ability. That's obviously, you know, that's, that's a no-brainer. Uh, he's, he's very dangerous with the ball in his hand. But I think now in re refining his return game, what I mean by that is just kind of getting better at the little things. Uh, this, just some of the decision-making, the ball security, uh, some of the calls. You know, we have some calls that the returner makes sometimes. Things like that I think he can really improve on. And, and I, saw, I think you saw that because he obviously was trending big time, uh, trending, you know, up at the end of the season. So hopefully we can kind of just pick up where we left off. You know, that's easier said than done. Um, but but here's, here's a guy that, that hasn't had, obviously, only one year of experience in the NFL return game because it's totally different than college. And so, you know, I still think there's a lot of room for growth there. As far as I know, Taysom predated your arrival here. But when, you know, Sean – trades back in to get a guy like Tommy Stevens and mentions him on special teams. Just your thoughts on what you see from him from a, I guess, a physical ability standpoint. And then even teams kind of copycatting that a little bit and, and trying athletic quarterbacks on special teams. Do you have any kind of thoughts on that in general? You know, I'm going to let Phil talk on that in a second because he knows, he knows Tommy uh, personally a lot better than I do. I can just tell you from my perspective, watching Tommy Stevens, 
um, you know, perform as a college player. You know, he's obviously got the size. He's obviously got great speed. I know, I know from meeting with him now on these, on these virtual uh, meetings, he's a very intelligent player. And so I'm really looking, here's a guy that's got all the quote unquote, the tools to work with uh, from my perspective, you know, to answer your second part of your question, you know, I, I think, you know, you look back like Trace McSorley, the Baltimore Ravens, there's some other quarterbacks that are now, you know, if they're not going to be the, the, maybe the, the starter or the, even the number two, a lot of teams are now kind of copycatting that because of what Taysom's done. And I think uh, it's funny because you hear it in the draft a lot. You hear even in our draft meetings, you know, can this guy do this? Can, can this guy do that? If he's not going to be a guy, because you're always looking for jobs for that guy to do if he's going to be around on the 53 or maybe the practice squad. And so, so Tommy's obviously a good example of that. Phil, you can kind of take it from there because you know Tommy a lot better than I do personally. Yeah, so, you know, I had to, uh, I was fortunate enough to get to coach Tommy when he was at Penn State and I was there. And at that time, he was competing to be the starting quarterback. Um, so, unfortunately, I didn't get to use him on special teams at that point because uh, he was in a quarterback battle. But he was always a guy that, you know, he's big, he's fast, he's physical, he's super smart, he's super tough um, that – I always knew could play special teams for us. And, you know, he's an extremely hard worker and, and he fits everything that, that we want here. Um, so we're really excited and I'm excited, you know, to be able to get to work with him and have Riz work with him once we can get back on the field. Phil, uh, JT Gray earned second team all pro honors last season. What characteristics does he bring to your unit? JT brings, the first thing he brings is he's extremely tough and competitive and he can run. And he takes great pride in special teams and wanting to be the best. And that goes, you know, he's a guy that'll come in and, and he studies extra film and he knows his role and he has a plan for all his opponents. Um, and he really, he really is a pro's pro when it comes to special teams. And he's a guy that he's worked his way up. You know, it wasn't like it was given to him and he's continued to work hard and he's only going to continue to get better and, and he's hungry and has things that he wants to prove. If I could, if I could piggyback on that real quick, and just you know, I was I was super impressed. You know, I, JT's a guy I watched come out of college, and I thought you know could could really perform well um, on special teams in the NFL. But now, got having worked with him for a year, you know, Phil kind of hit on it. Here's a guy that you talk about, and we talk about this all the time with special teams players. There's a lot of guys that come into the league, and their goal isn't to be a special teams player. They want to be, you know, they, they maybe have aspirations of being a a really good defensive or offensive player. Here's a guy that that not only knew his role, but embraced his role. I think there's a big difference. He embraced, um, you know, he, and he looked at a guy, studied other special teams players in the league. I don't know if I've been around a guy that spent as much time as JT did during a game week of preparing for special teams, meaning watching the opponents, watching himself. And this guy had a plan going in. So not only athletically is he gifted in all, in all the tools that he has, but he, he really studied, and, and I think he prepared himself. And, uh, you know, the sky's the limit for him. You know, he, he's, he's got amazing, um, an amazing ceiling for himself, meaning he sets high, high goals for himself. So I'll give you an example. He was pissed off that he was second team all pro. I mean, he was, he was upset. I mean, here's, you know, you got the rest of the league that would be jumping, out, you know, jumping for joy, and JT was upset that he didn't wasn't first team. Um, and, and so he comes back this year with, with more fire and more hunger and so I just, you know, just kind of piggyback off what Phil said. I agree with everything with what Phil said, but just really impressed with that player. You know, the, the other thing that, that he brings that I was thinking as listening to the Riz talk was that competition that he brings because we're fortunate in having JT and having Justin Hardy on the other side. And those guys competing in practice to get better and that sort of thing. They make each other better, which is an awesome combination for us. Yeah, my follow-up question was about Justin Hardy uh, and how, you know, Resigned for another year, a veteran guy in that room, you know, just bringing him back. How important is that for your unit? And just another person who's been there and, you know, gives all that he can to that unit. Yeah, you know, there's, there's special teams. There's, it's probably the biggest area, not probably, it is the biggest area on every NFL team where there's the most turnover every year because the bottom of your roster is the roster, the, the, the party roster is going to change the most. And so there's always the most moving parts on special teams. You don't see as much on the offense or defensive side, maybe in a particular year here or there, but usually not. Usually there's some, there's more uh, consistency and continuity. So to, to be able, my point is to be able to have guys that come back into the fold like Justin Hardy, like JT Gray, 
there, there's, there's really, I can't say enough to have the experience, not only the talent, but the experience and the leadership. You know, Justin's a guy, he's a little bit more outspoken than JT. JT's more of a quiet leader, leader by example. Justin, as, as you watch him play, he plays with a lot of passion. Uh, that's contagious, you know. Little things like, you know, we kick the ball off and happens to be a touchback. You guys probably notice those guys are racing through the goal line and they want to be first down the field so they compete in everything they do. You know, Phil mentioned that. And so that's contagious. You know, a, a guy like the way Justin Hardy practices and the way he approaches, same thing with, with, his, with the way he embraces his role um, and, 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 and always wanting to improve. And so, uh, you know, here's a guy, another guy that doesn't never ever is satisfied with his performance. He might have a great game and he's looking, he may have 20 plays and 19 of them were great. And he's pissed off about the one uh, that, that, you know, he didn't play well on. And so uh, again, to ha have that leadership back, to have the experience back, uh, we're, we're really excited, you know, because there's always going to be, like I said, a lot of moving parts. So to have some of those guys that you know have been there and, and been in the fire, it's, it's, it's certainly, uh, it's comforting as a coach. Can, can you talk a little bit about, I assume it's a good problem to have, but a, a lot is made of the depth on the Saints roster and how hard it is to make this roster. I assume it's, it's a good problem to have, but as the special teams coach, when you want to have core special teams guys, but they've got depth at other positions, how does that all kind of, how does the dust settle or those conversations go when you look at core special teams guys and roster cuts and things like that? Again, I'm assuming it's a good problem to have, but nonetheless, it still maybe pushes guys that, you may have said in years past would make the roster that can't make the roster. It, it's a great question. Um, you, you never feel like as a special teams coach, you never feel like you have enough. Um, and so I guess I would say that uh, number one, it is a good problem because, you know, I trust me, I've coached teams before that you didn't, you didn't feel like you had that competition. You know, we're, we're always, I'm, I'm one of those guys that believes wholeheartedly that every guy in camp should be battling it to, to make the end of that roster if they're not a starter. And, you know, we, we impress that upon the young guys when they come in. You know, we've already obviously met with these rookies, and a lot of these guys already know, uh, drafted or undrafted, that, that their, their, you know, their vision or their um, avenue onto this football team is, is through special teams. And so when you have that leader to some of those older guys that have been there, done that, it's easy to point to some of those guys and say, hey, listen, Justin Harding made this team on special teams. JT Gray made this team. Craig Robertson, Deontay Harris. You can just kind of keep going down the list. Dwayne Washington. And so – there's been a number of great examples since, and obviously since Sean's been here a long time, that, have, that you know you have, you have great examples to point to. That's number one. Number two, you mentioned the discussions that take place. You know, there, that, those battles were happening all through camp, and you know we constantly kind of stack the board and rank positions, and you know you're jockeying for those last couple spots. And listen, you know Sean is great in terms of communicating with us in, in, in the vision for the player. Um, listen, this guy's going to be the fifth or sixth in his position. Do you, is, does he have a vision on special teams? And, and, and if, that, if that player doesn't, um, it's hard for that player to make our football team. And I know a lot of head coaches that don't look at it like Sean. We're fortunate to, 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 to be part of this because Sean's vision is very similar and almost on the same exact page with ours, meaning if that player is not going to be a, an offense or defensive starter or whatnot, you know, he's got to have a, he's got to have a value and he's got to have a vision on special teams. And so, those, those, those roster spots, I mean, that, that's the most exciting thing about training camp for us. You know, we come in as coaches, and I know I'm speaking for Phil when I say this, that's the exciting part. You know, to watch the 90-man kind of, you know, get down to the 53. Now, this year, uh, there's a couple extra spots now on game day. That's going to be interesting. You know, I know the one spot's got to go to the offensive line, but now you have an extra player that you can activate uh, this year. And, that, and also, there's new practice squad rules where you can taxi guys up and back those rules have changed. And so that's going to be really a new dynamic for us as well, meaning, you know, week to week, you know, seeing those guys, not only for the 53, but for the guys who are going to be active. And it's the same conversations, you know, week to week, once we have the 53-man roster, Sean's the same way. Listen, if this guy's going to the game, you know, he, he, we want to see him active. We want to see him playing. We want to know the vision. If there's not a vision for that player week to week on special teams, he might not be active. And so there's no doubt it's a great problem. And, uh, and, and we're very fortunate to have some depth in a lot of different positions. I think we're deeper at some spots than others. Maybe we might be a little bit younger, but, but no matter what, I think there's some great competition, and that's, that's really exciting for us as special teams coaches, for sure. 
What is the defense getting in Michael Wilhoyt? He was with y'all last year. And now he's, you know, moving over to defense and getting back to kind of the positions that he played back when he was a player. What do you mean? He was a special teams player. We always bust his chops. He wasn't a linebacker. <laughs> no, listen. Yeah, no, we, we, uh, we love Mike. I think Mike is a, uh, Mike is an intelligent, uh, passionate, hardworking guy that, uh, you talk about a guy who's, uh, yeah, I mentioned the word contagious before when I, when I was talking about Justin Hardy. You know, Mike's, Mike's one of those guys, too. He's got a contagious personality, always upbeat, always in a good mood, has a real, real, uh, I think, realistic approach to the game for the young players. The best thing that Mike did for us last year in his first year as a coach was he mentored a lot of those younger players. And uh, a lot of those guys that were rookie, like I, I'll mention like a Cade Nellis, a Carl Granderson, uh, some of those guys that were first-year players, Mike spent an awful uh, a lot amount of time with them. And a lot of times where Phil and I were game planning during the week, Mike was spending an awful lot of time with those guys in meetings, uh, watching film, going over improvements. Because as we all know, there's only so much time in the week. So Mike did a really nice job of mentoring and tutoring those young players. And so he was really, really valuable. Uh, you know, he's still going to, you know, he, he still laughs and jokes, ah, I'm, I'm not done with special teams because he always, he's, he views himself as a linebacker and a special teams guy. And so I know he'll still have a little bit of a hand in with us, but I think the defense is getting a, uh, you know, a gem. I think, I think Mike is a, is, is a, a really up and coming young coach that the linebackers are really going to enjoy working with. And uh, I'm excited for him. And, and even though I bust his chops all the time, I'm, that he's a special teams guy. I know that he's going to be very valuable to the defensive staff as well. I bust his chops too. He went to Washburn, which is, you know, in Topeka. And I went to the University of Kansas, which is just, you know, better. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> you know, everybody wants reps, but nobody can have them no matter what team you play for. So what are y'all working on in those special teams meetings with those younger guys either rookies first or second year players so they can once training camp eventually gets here can hit the ground running as best that they can yeah and that's that's really been it's, it's great that you bring that up so so when phil and i first started this whole process you know you kind of like all right listen we're gonna have this many meetings what's our goal at the end of this so when these guys come to training camp, like what's our goal with the rookies well number one is there is a lot of rule differences between the NFL and college football, and it's particularly in special teams. I think I think you probably don't even realize how many different rules there are um, in in the difference. So number one is educating these guys on the rules. So you know our goal, okay, listen, we can't we can't do field work right now. So what what can we do to make these guys as prepared as possible when we do start practicing? Well, number one is all those rules. So we've really hammered and hammered and hammered home all the rule differences. That's number one, because the punt game is completely different. The kickoff game is completely different. Uh, you know, PATs, the hashes, all that stuff's completely different. So really have hammered home the rules. Number two is our terminology. You know, we, we, we like to, I like to use the phrase, we've got to be speaking the same language. You know, every special teams coach, there might be a technique and you talk to five different special teams coaches, and they might call it five different things. So we want to, we keep hammering home our terminology to the players as well. We want to speak the same language. And then the last thing is we've, you know, we, we've obviously given them, you know, playbook material. And, and the nice thing is we're allowed to share video. And, you know, we, we, we save all of our practice clips from last year, from OTAs, from training camp, our drill work. And what we've done is we've showed those guys the drill work and the things that they can do on their own the techniques, because that's really special teams wise is a little bit different than offensive defense, meaning there's going to be techniques that some of these players do on special teams that they've never done ever in their life. That's not going to be the case on offensive defense, right? Receivers have run routes, linebackers have, have fit things, defensive linemen have gotten off the ball, defensive backs have, back, have backpedaled. But some of these guys have never, there's guys we, they're going to be coming in that have never played special teams. Never. Maybe never in high school or college because they were marquee players. And now all of a sudden their way to make this team, their avenue on this team is going to be through special teams. And so some of them have never taken a punt set, for example. Or some of them may have never covered a kickoff or never played front line of kickoff return or never rushed a punt. Or ne so 
we've showed them a bunch of the drill work that we're going to do and maybe they missed during OTAs and we've asked them, hey, the things that we can do, incorporate this into your workout. Because we don't want the first time that, I'm just going to give you an example, Adam Troutman, first time he's taking a punch set. I don't want that to be when we come back for training camp. I want him to have a bunch of punch sets already under his belt, if you will. So come in. So those have really been the three things we focused on the most. The rules, the terminology, speaking the same language, and then obviously getting as much of the, of the drill and incorporating as much of that into their workouts as possible. And I think, you know, it's, it, it's so far so good. I think a lot of these guys have been uh, really, really on top of the meetings in terms of asking good questions and even not during the meetings. And we, I might get a text on a Friday night at eight o'clock and the guy, hey coach, I'm looking at this and I'm not so sure what this is. Can you help me out? And I've had a lot of good questions, a lot of good, you know, back and forth, a lot of good feedback. And so uh, that that's really was our, was our goal, Amy, is to get these guys – as caught up as possible in those three areas as we, as we approach training camp. Kind of following up on that, are there any of the, uh, the undrafted free agents that you guys, you know, through these meetings have decided, you know, kind of come up with like, this is somebody I really want to get to work with in training camp because I think he's got a lot of potential to maybe potentially be like a JT Gray or Justin Hardy and a guy that really stands out in that unit. Sure. You know, I'm going to give kudos real quick to our, to our, our draft guys because, you know, Jeff Ireland and that whole staff, they do a fantastic job of keeping us updated on, on all the players that we're kind of targeting going in. So there's not really a lot of guys that we didn't know anything about, meaning coming in. And so even the, not, not just the draft picks, but even the undrafted guys uh, that we brought in, we all kind of had some awareness of, of those players. So you take a guy like like Callaway, for example, you know, we, we evaluated him as a returner and, 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 and possibly as a, as a core player, a guy, Juwan Johnson, that, you know, Phil worked with at, at Penn State and then went on to finish at Oregon. You know, we had a, a lot of background with, uh, with Juwan, if you will. Joe Bocci is a guy uh, from Michigan State that we, we evaluated as a linebacker and a core special teamer. And so those are just a couple of guys that pop into my head. But, but uh, all those guys we felt, you know, again – we have a great process, in my opinion. I think Jeff and his staff do an unbelievable job, and are very, very thorough in the in the draft process. Not only with the draft picks, but the undrafted. So when we come in, we have a really good background, and I think every guy that we target, we have that. I mentioned that word vision before. I think we have a really good vision for those players and, and what we think they could do down the road and how they can make our team. And that's really the question Jeff's always asking us. You know, if we're going to bring this guy in, give me a vision. How can this guy make our team? Can he, can he be a special teams core player? And so to really aim is to really answer your question. I'm, I'm excited to work with all these guys because I had to kind of have a little bit of a background with most of them, you know, and, and, and Phil's worked with a couple of these guys as well in the past. And that's exciting too, because we had some good background on these players. Oh, and uh, Phil, obviously, you know, having worked with Jawan, uh, I know special teams was something that he mentioned uh when we talked to him after uh, the, the team signed him, uh, what are you? What are your expectations from a, a guy like that? Well, I think you know, Juwan understands his his avenue to be able to make this team is going to be on special teams, and and from a guy who has been productive in college and has done it before, um, you know, I'm really really excited to get a chance to to work with him and him be able to show that you know, guy his size that can run the way he does is physical but also is smart enough and loves special teams enough to know how important it is. I mean, heck, those are the guys you want to work with. So I think he's got a really bright future, and we're excited to get him out there and see what he can do. Some of you guys have covered this team for a while. You know, George Johnson played for the Saints for a little bit. This is Judge Juwan's brother. I, I actually coached George at Rutgers. So we go way, I go way back with the Johnson family. And I remember Juwan when he used to come to the games, to the Rutgers games, and he was just a, a grade school guy. So, so we go way back with uh, – you know, with, with them and Phil got a chance to coach both George and Juwan. And so, you know, it, again, we're just, uh, he's a guy that really we targeted in this process. And, you know, we, we were really hoping if we didn't draft him, we were going to be able to get him in the, in the free agent uh, pool. And then that worked out. So again, another guy that really excited about.